True Grit 2010 is a modern Western masterpiece directed by the Coen brothers. Starring Jeff Bridges, Haley Steinfeld, and Matt Damon. Based on the 1968 novel by Charles Portis, this film is a gripping tale of justice, revenge, and the harsh realities of the American frontier. Hi everyone, welcome back to Yusuf Reacts. Today, we're diving deep into the 2010 remake of True Grit, a film that redefined the Western genre for a new generation. If you're a fan of Westerns, or just love a good story, stick around. The story follows 14-year-old Maddie Ross, played by Haley Steinfeld, who is determined to seek justice for her father's murder. She hires Rooster Cogburn, a grizzled and tough youth. S. Marshall portrayed by Jeff Bridges, to track down the killer, Tom Chaney, played by Josh Brolin. Together with a Texas Ranger named LaBeouf, portrayed by Matt Damon. They embark on a dangerous journey through the unforgiving wilderness. One of the film's strongest elements is its character development. Let's talk about the three main characters. Maddie Ross, a young girl with incredible determination and a sense of justice. Haley Steinfeld's performance was nothing short of remarkable, earning her an Academy Award nomination at just 14 years old. Rooster Cogburn Jeff Bridges brings a gritty, yet nuanced performance as Rooster. His portrayal of the hard-drinking, no-nonsense Marshall is both compelling and layered, offering more depth than just a stereotypical Western hero. LaBeouf Matt Damon's LaBeouf adds a mix of humor and seriousness to the story. His character provides a contrast to Rooster's roughness and highlights the complexities of law and justice in the Old West. The film delves into themes of justice, revenge, and moral ambiguity. The Coen brothers excel in creating a world that feels both authentic and larger than life. The cinematography by Roger Deakins captures the stark beauty and brutality of the frontier, making the landscape a character in itself. The use of light and shadow, along with the carefully chosen color palette, adds to the film's somber tone. Every frame is meticulously crafted, drawing you deeper into Maddie's quest for justice. The score, composed by Carter Burwell, is another standout element. It blends traditional Western motifs with a more modern sensibility, enhancing the film's emotional impact without overshadowing the action on screen. 14-year-old Maddie Ross joins an aging U. S. Marshall and another lawman in tracking her father's killer into hostile Indian territory in Joel and Ethan Cohen's adaptation of Charles Portis' original novel. Sticking more closely to the source material than the 1969 feature adaptation starring Western icon John Wayne, the Cohen's True Grit tells the story from the young girl's perspective and Ray teams the celebrated filmmaking duo with their No Country for Old Men producing partner Scott Rudin, Josh Brolin and Barry Pepper co-star. 1870 Fort Smith, Arkansas. With nothing but revenge to keep her going after the murder of her father by a once-trusted, cowardly snake, plucky 14-year-old Maddie Ross entices the mean, one-eyed you. S. Marshall Rooster Cogburn with a reward to hunt down her father's killer. As the excellent sharpshooter, Texas Ranger LaBeouf, joins in, the unlikely trio forms a reluctant team and embarks on a peril. Laden quest deep into the heart of the hostile Indian territory to track down the murderer. However, the rugged wilderness is no place for a girl, and the odds are against them. Now, only vengeance matters. Is True Grit enough to see justice served? In 1878, Maddie Ross Haley Steinfeld, a 14-year-old from Yale County, Arkansas, is determined to avenge her murdered father. Frank Ross was killed by his hired hand, Tom Chaney Josh Brolin. After trying to dissuade a drunken Chaney from shooting a fellow card player who had allegedly cheated him, Chaney stole Ross's horse and fled the town. Enraged that no one bothered to pursue or convict Chaney, Maddie takes the investigation into her own hands. Leaving her mother and two younger siblings at home, Maddie travels to Fort Smith where her father was killed. Despite her tender age, Maddie is clever, confident, and an unshakable bargainer. She sells her father's now useless string of ponies back to the reluctant seller, called 
Stonehill Dakin Matthews, and acquires $320 from the sale. Renting a room at a Fort Smith boarding house, where her father had been staying before his death, Maddie resolves to hire a U.S. Marshal to track down Tom Cheney. After consulting the local sheriff during a public hanging, she settles on the marshal described as the meanest and most fearless, Reuben Rooster Cogburn Jeff Bridges. After trailing Cogburn to a saloon, she attempts to hire him but is rebuffed. Maddie makes a second attempt after a court hearing at which Cogburn gave testimony, but Cogburn turns her down again, doubting that she actually possesses the $50 she offered him as a reward for Cheney's capture. At the boarding house, Maddie is approached by a Texas Ranger, LaBeouf Matt Damon, who is aware of her mission to bring Tom Cheney to justice. LaBeouf had been tracking Cheney for several months after Cheney had murdered a Texas senator. He offers to combine his knowledge with Cogburn's to track Cheney down. Maddie, put off by LaBeouf's cocky attitude, rejects his offer. The following day, Maddie buys back one of her father's ponies to use on her journey, naming him Little Blackie. She visits with Cogburn, who has decided to accept her offer, though he refuses to let Maddie accompany him as she had planned. After Maddie threatens to report Cogburn to the sheriff if he leaves with her $50, he seemingly gives in and instructs her to be ready for the journey the next morning. Armed with her father's pistol, Maddie rides her pony to Cogburn's lodgings in the morning, but discovers that he had joined forces with LaBeouf, departed without her, and left her a train ticket back to Yale County. Furious and insulted, Maddie follows his trail to a nearby river, spying Cogburn and LaBeouf on the opposite bank. After the ferryman refuses to take her across, Maddie rides Little Blackie into the water and the two swim to the other side. Cogburn seems impressed by Maddie's gumption, but LaBeouf is clearly irritated by her domineering attitude. After an ensuing argument with Cogburn, whom he also dislikes, LaBeouf abandons the mission, taunting Cogburn for being who rod by a little girl. Maddie and Cogburn continue the journey, forming something of a kinship as they travel. Cogburn picks up the information that Tom Cheney is not too far ahead of them, and that he may have joined up with another outlaw, Lucky Ned Pepper, and his gang. Seeking shelter from the cold, the two discover a cabin at nightfall, but find that it is temporarily inhabited by two men whom Cogburn recognizes. As Emmett Quincy Paul Ray and Moon Domnal Gleason, outlaws tied in with the Ned Pepper gang. Moon has a bullet wound in his leg and is clearly in great pain. Noticing the substantial amount of food being prepared, Cogburn suspects the rest of the Pepper gang will arrive at the cabin soon. He offers to take Moon to a doctor and to give them some escape time if they provide information. Moon, desperate for medical attention, begins to talk, but is mortally stabbed by Quincy, who is then shot dead by Cogburn. As he dies, Moon admits that Lucky Ned is expected at the cabin that very night. Cogburn and Maddie hide in the bushes near the cabin, waiting for the gang to arrive. They first see LaBeouf approach the cabin, continuing the search alone. However, the Ned Pepper gang arrives moments later. One of them lassos LaBeouf, dragging him off his horse. From cover, Cogburn shoots two of the gang members inadvertently winging LaBeouf in the arm, causing the others to flee. He and Maddie take the injured LaBeouf into the cabin, though LaBeouf is unhappy to be working with Cogburn again. Cogburn drinks heavily throughout the night and is incredibly intoxicated as they set out the next morning. He and LaBeouf squabble over their marksmanship skills, but Maddie attempts to keep the two men on task. After setting up camp in the woods that night, Cogburn vents his frustration about their mission, claiming he has been dragged into a wild goose chase by a harpy in trousers and a nincompoop. He bows out of the arrangement, and LaBeouf departs again, though he has gained genuine respect for Maddie. Both men agree that Cheney's trail is cold, and that continuing the search would be useless. A dejected Maddie falls asleep. The next morning, Maddie goes to a nearby stream for water and notices a stranger there watering his horses. Shocked, she realizes it is none other than Tom Cheney himself. Cheney recognizes her as Frank Ross's daughter and seems merely bemused by her presence. 
until Maddie brandishes her father's revolver and attempts to take him into custody. An angered Cheney approaches with his rifle and Maddie fires, but only grazes his arm. Cheney drags her to the opposite bank, where the rest of the Ned Pepper gang has set up camp. Cogburn, having slept in the woods through the night, hears the commotion but is too late to retrieve Maddie. Lucky Ned Pepperberry Pepper, familiar with Cogburn, shouts across the stream to him and bargains Maddie's life for ample escape time. Cogburn agrees to not pursue the gang if Maddie is not harmed, and appears to ride away over the hills. Pepper is impressed by Maddie's strength of will, and assures her that she will not be hurt. While Ned and the three other gang members leave to address finances, Cheney is ordered to stay with Maddie and to leave her somewhere safe. Cheney tries to get out of the assignment, but to no avail. Maddie, despite Lucky Ned's assurance otherwise, fears that Cheney will kill her once they are alone. After the gang departs, Maddie offers to give Cheney an affidavit if he sets her free. Cheney refuses, saying that all he needs is Maddie's silence. He attacks her and holds a knife to her throat, but is knocked unconscious by LaBeouf who had remained in the area and heard the earlier gunshots. He explains that he rode back to the woods, met with Cogburn, and outlined a plan for Maddie's rescue. He says that Cogburn himself has arranged a showdown with Lucky Ned. As Maddie and LaBeouf watch from a hilltop, Cogburn comes face to face with Ned and the three other gang members. Having pursued Ned on and off for some time, Cogburn gives Ned the choice of being taken back to Fort Smith to be hanged or to be killed on the spot. Ned taunts Cogburn, calling him a one-eyed fat man, and Cogburn charges his horse. Holding the reins in his teeth, he fires revolvers with both hands, killing the three other men and mortally wounding Lucky Ned before his horse takes a fall, trapping Cogburn underneath. Ned, with his last moments of strength, prepares to kill Cogburn. From the hilltop, LaBeouf proves his skill in marksmanship by making a 400 yard rifle shot, shooting Lucky Ned off his horse before the marshal is harmed. Moments later, LaBeouf is knocked unconscious by a now awakened Tom Cheney, who attempts to grab LaBeouf's rifle. Maddie intercepts and seizes the gun herself. Ordering Cheney to stand, Maddie fires a fatal shot to his chest, fulfilling her goal of avenging her father. The recoil from the blast sends Maddie stumbling backwards into a deep pit. She calls for help, but LaBeouf is still out cold. Cogburn appears and begins to scale the side of the pit with a rope to rescue her. But Maddie's left hand has already been bitten by a rattlesnake. Cogburn retrieves her and temporarily treats her wound, but knows he must get her medical attention quickly or she will die. A revived LaBeouf hoists them out of the pit, and Cogburn and Maddie ride away on Little Blackie. After miles of running, Little Blackie begins to suffer from exhaustion and eventually collapses. Knowing they cannot stop their journey, Cogburn shoots the horse and continues on, carrying Maddie himself. They soon reach a general store and Maddie is taken inside. Nearly 25 years later, 40-year-old Maddie Elizabeth Marvel looks back on her adventures. Her arm had been severely damaged by the snake venom and was amputated. Cogburn had departed by the time she came back into consciousness. After returning home to her family in Arkansas, Maddie had written to Cogburn, inviting him to visit her and collect his $50 reward, but he never responded or appeared. The adult Maddie learns that the elderly Cogburn is now a performer in a traveling Wild West show and finally exchanges letters with him, arranging to meet once again to swap stories. Arriving at the fairgrounds, Maddie is told that Cogburn had died three days earlier. Maddie has Cogburn's body moved to her family plot. She reflects on her life. She never married and kept her no-nonsense attitude over the years. She never heard again from LaBeouf, but holds him in her memory. Maddie laments that time just gets away from us. The key to it is the performance from Steinfeld. She may well have been put forward for supporting actress. In a political move by the studio but she is the heart and soul of this film. Her performance makes her Maddie a stubborn youth, but one with just enough vulnerability about her too. Suggest some of it is a front to cover herself in this regard.
While she never struck me as a person that would exist within this story. She did convince me as a character and she was a delight to watch this as her story and she makes it such. This puts Bridges in the supporting role and he is great there, having fun with the role and adding color to things. Damon Ender plays wisely sparking nicely off Bridges but letting these two having the light. Brolin, Pepper and others all deliver solid turns without stealing anything. Perhaps aware of what the Hanra is best known for the landscapes, Deacons is restrained. Where he made art with Jesse James, here he focuses on the smaller moments the light. From a campfire, the falling of snow and he captures them excellently. At some point he will win his Oscar maybe this is it but certainly his body of work cries out for it. True Grit is not quite the brilliant piece of work that the For Your Consideration campaign would have you believe but it is a great piece of storytelling. The Coen brothers deliver some fine dialogue and color but leave the telling. Free of cynicism or snideness not a word, but you know what I mean. True Grit 2010 is more than just a remake. It's a powerful reimagining that pays homage to the classic western while bringing something new to the table. With its strong performances, stunning cinematography, and gripping story, it's a must-watch for any film lover. Whether you're a fan of the original 1969 version or new to the story, the 2010 True Grit stands on its own as a modern classic. So, what did you think of True Grit? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more movie reviews and analysis from Usof Reacts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.